Hey there, golf fans. What do you call a golfer with three rangefinders on his belt and a pair of rangefinding binoculars? Names. Mean names. I'm Landon Ashworth. I've been on TV shows, Golf Channel. You don't care who I am. This is a video about trying to determine whether or not a cost-effective rangefinder can stack up against a very, very expensive rangefinder. So I have the Fine Caddy rangefinder. It does slope, it does everything that this rangefinder does. The only difference, this is $179. This was almost $600. I don't believe in vamp, so we're gonna get straight to the video. We're at Perdera Country Club, my country club, and we're going to see how this stacks up to this. Here we go. $74 yards for $179. 74 yards for almost $600, and 74 yards for almost $2,000. Let's go to another hole. Well, we've got a much harder hole. We're on the 11th hole now, and we've got a massive downhill hole. The flag is over water. So we're gonna test out these rangefinders and see how they handle the slope. I'm pulling out the Fine Caddy Black Edition. It's the exact same thing as a white, but it's in black. Now let's just talk a little bit about the makeup of these rangefinders themselves. The Fine Caddy, it's got a really nice adjustable eyepiece for focus. It's really sharp, it's really crisp. It's made of metal, it's got a leather exterior. It feels really nice in your hand. Now the Bushnell I've had for many years and it's made of plastic and it feels cheap. The only thing that makes it feel a little nicer is this little rubber insert that it gives you a little bit of grip on. Uh, this can just come off, you can wash it. The eyepiece has fallen off about a thousand times. It doesn't appear to me that any single aspect of the Fine Caddy rangefinder would ever break or fall off. It feels really well made. Let's see how they range a super far downhill. The placard right here says it's 411 yards to the front of the green, and that's exactly where the pin is. So let's see how these, these things stack up against each other. I'm gonna pull out my phone because I can't uh, see through the rangefinder with the nice camera. So here we go. Okay, it just gave me 414 playing 385 yards. Let's see what the Bushnell Expensive Rangefinder says. The Bushnell just gave us 417 playing 369. The Fine Caddy gave us 414 385. So the numbers are pretty darn close. But as far as the placard on the tee box goes, the Fine Caddy is closer than the $600 rangefinder. What about just a random spot on the fairway? So on this hole, the rough juts out right in the middle of the fairway. What if we're looking for a landing point? Let's test these out on just an inanimate part of the fairway. We're first gonna start off with my $2,000 hunting range finding binoculars from Vortex. These things are accurate to within like an inch. So we're gonna get our first number and find out what these two have to stack up against. It is 288 yards to an exact point right where the rough juts out. Let's test these things out and see how they do. This was off by several yards. This was off by one yard. I've got to give it to the uh, cost-effective rangefinder. This thing is awesome. Well, we're back from the course and there are some pretty startling takeaways. The reticle on the Fine Caddy was much, much bigger than the reticle on the Bushnell V2 slope. I like the big reticle on the Fine Caddy because it made ranging the pin and hitting the pin so much easier. Both of them have like this jolt thing when you hit the pin. This one jolted like a second or two before this one ever could. So the technology on the Fine Caddy is superior than the Bushnell in my opinion and in anybody's opinion because it's just science. One other thing to consider is the battery. The Bushnell takes a CR2 battery and you can always have a spare one in your bag in case your battery dies. The Fine Caddy has a rechargeable battery built into the rangefinder itself. It has a little recharging port right on the front. So if you're a person that forgets to charge things, the Fine Caddy might not be for you, but personally I have a GPS watch that I charge before any single time that I play golf. So charging this thing at the same time that I charge my Garmin watch wouldn't be that big of a deal. I really, really liked the fact that there is a light if you don't have the slope on. So if the slope is turned off, there's this little red light on the top of the rangefinder. I just played in a Corn Fairy event and my playing partner 
was using uh, a range finding device like this and he was definitely cheating. He was definitely using the slope. I am, I'm not good at calling people out, so I didn't say anything, but you know, if you're going to use the slope technology in a tournament on this, it's just as easy as covering it up, covering your eye, hitting the number, finding the slope, and then as you pull it back off your eye, just flipping it back up or down. It's really easy to cheat. On this one, it's a lot harder to cheat. If you're out there playing with your buddies and you just wanna keep them honest, buy them this as a birthday present. Switching between yards and meters on both these is super easy on both. You just hold the power button on this one, hold the mode button on this one. Well, as for me, there's only one thing left to do, and that is clear a little room on my belt. So long, Bushnell.